Hello, and welcome to the fourth in the series of the Antiques Treasure Trail. My name's Ian McMillan, and I've joined forces with antiques expert Maurice Goodlad. It might look like we're knocking this house down, but in fact, we're going to turn it into a home using affordable antiques. Here, Peter, have a go with that one. Oh, good morning, Maurice. Come Hello, in. John. Nice day. John and Jill have just bought this house in a small village called Thornton Dale in the middle of the North Yorkshire Moors. Their aim is to move in in six months' time which gives us plenty of opportunity to uncover the types of antiques they're looking for and put them into storage. We'd like you to, you and Morris, to, to look round and see if you can find us some things which really make the place from a, a house into a home. It's just like Christmas, this, isn't it? Although chaos theory still operates throughout most of Midstream Cottage, John and Jill take one of the first opportunities to unpack some of their cherished possessions, some of which we've found so far on our trail turning their house into a home without costing them a fortune. Antique collecting is getting more and more popular and there are antique fairs springing up all over the country. We're at Ripley Castle near Harrogate for this week's Antiques Treasure Trip. The Ingleby family has lived at the castle since the early 14th century. It's set in a village of cobbled streets and picture postcard cottages. Today, the castle's latest invaders are antique lovers, as it provides the perfect setting for an antiques fair. It's a superb way of spending a day out for the whole family, and John and Jill have joined us as we search through the furniture and ornaments that are completely different from the antiques we found at car boot sales. Yet the idea behind our quest of finding affordable antiques remains firmly the same. Jill would like this. This is, this is wonderful. This is a Victorian uh, ladies' work table. It's where the ladies in Victorian times used to keep their, um, all their needlework that there's sewing needles and uh, bobbins and what kind of wool. Deep. Why is yeah. that so deep? Well, because of the knitting needles. Well, the this knitting. Is, we're getting a different kind of antique at this place, aren't we, Maurice? This isn't like the car boot sale, is it? This is, <laughs> these are more genteel <laughs> antiques, aren't they? Yes. Rather more expensive, too. Yeah. But nice quality things. I mean, I, if, if I came here as a punter, I wouldn't dare haggle about these because I feel like I'm surrounded by experts. What do you th think people should haggle when they get here? I'm sure they should. If they're interested in the piece, why not just say to the dealer, well, it's a bit more than I want to go to. But then couldn't the dealer or... blind you with science? Or blind you with antique knowledge? Well, he may well do that, but you can still fix a price. If you see 1500 on it, you say, I'll give you 1300 It's worth a try? I think, I think it's worth a try. I would certainly do it anyway. I'd, mm. I'd offer a third off from start with it. So as well as looking at them, what yeah. would you be looking for on this? Making sure what would I be looking for? Solid, well, so it's not I'd, going to drop over? Well, you need to look at the legs, actually. Mm. Because on a, on a piece like this, the legs could quite easily have been broken. So you would look for any any repairs. So much we're tipping this up, but I mean, shouldn't we be a bit nervous at tipping this up because it's an expensive antique? Well, it is expensive, and you should be you should be careful with it. But there's no need to be nervous. So even when something's really expensive, you've still got to get your hands on it. Oh you? yes, yes. I mean, the more expensive it is, the more times you need to put your hands on it because you want to be absolutely sure it's right. So you're going to be looking for damage, originality. And this has got everything, actually. It, it's original, it's, it, it's really good colour. And a star piece. This lovely piece of furniture was just one of many very special items that we came across. Although it's worth being aware that a lot of the pieces can be a bit more expensive. And without question, the fair did prove a more daunting place to visit than some of the others on our trail. But the organiser couldn't agree more with Morris that everyone should set aside any apprehensions. I'd say sort of go around, you know, sort of, uh, it's, it's nice to sort of choose just one field to collect as well, uh, one subject, and go around and, and, and talk to the, the exhibitors a lot and learn from them. Don't rush into buying anything, you know, find out as much as you can and, you know, just keep coming to the sort of fairs and, you know, have a, have a good look around from places and judge the prices before you buy anything. And why have they become so popular, do you think? 
think probably because it's a lot it's on the television now as well and like you know you see these things people sort of uh, go to car boot sales and they pick up a bargain you know everybody's looking for the bargain aren't they? Exhibitors as well are always on the lookout for the bargains and I think as well because if you buy you buy an antique at least you know in 10 years down the road if you suddenly don't like it then at least you can sell it get your money back plus and reinvest it in something else. And this setting's conducive, isn't it, because you can have a sort of family day out here, can't you? Yeah, it's lovely. I mean, a lot of people do come with their kids in Ripley as, as well. I mean, well, you've seen everybody walks around with the ice creams. They come just for the ice cream shop sometimes in the middle of winter. Yeah, so it's nice. Come to the antiques fair, have a look around the castle, the gardens. Yeah, it's lovely. Nice setting. There are numerous fairs around the country throughout the year. For John and Jill, looking for items for the sitting room and dining room, it's an ideal opportunity to view a vast range of antiques. This is very highly polished, Morris. I mean, would it always have been highly polished? Has it been highly polished to make it look new? No. This, this patina, as it's called, is a result of years and years and years of polishing. You know, the maids would come every day, wax polish it. And, and this is what's nice about antiques. It's the finish, the patina, the, the glow. I mean, it glows, look at it. It's lovely red, figured mahogany. Things like these scratches, they don't matter. I like those. I like scratches and marks and burns from the penny. Is that because you then get the human story behind the... It's been lived in. A fine piece of antique wickerwork. Could be a writing case, could be a bit of luggage. Actually, it's a picnic basket. Inside we find the uh, Victorian sandwiches, a couple of Edwardian doily covers, and what's this? A uh -huh, Merlot. Del Veneto Vina de Tavola. That's uh, Italian for antique wine. It's hard work, this antique wine. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers! 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 Something else we've discovered in our travels so far is that antique collecting should be done at a leisurely pace. And what better way of putting this into practice than by breaking up the day with a picnic in the grounds of the castle and it provides an opportunity to discuss some of the morning's events. I thought that was very, very nice. And a couple of nice watercolours as well. Um, landscapes, not seascapes. I don't particularly like the seascapes, but landscapes. There was a couple we liked. So. It certainly was, yeah. It was certainly educational, wasn't it? I, I found that I've learnt a lot from this afternoon. Yeah, I mean, that's what So that's our advice to make antique buying a piece of cake. Well, after a good lunch and a glass of wine, we're all off to spend some more money. I'm joining forces with Jill while John and Morris go and see what they can find. Well, here's a nice portrait, John, that you could hang up and you could adopt this old gentleman as your grandfather. Yes, it's, it's a really good size, isn't it, Morris? Well, I think the tendency today is for uh, interior decorators to buy these old portraits. They weren't worth a lot 10, 15 years ago, but the interior decorators got into them and they now buy them in pairs, man and woman, and then the, the owners of the, the houses adopt them and they say, this is my great-granddad or granddad or whatever, and can't you see the resemblance? <laughs> so what caught your eye about this one, Jill? Well, I think the shape is very, very nice and the colour of the wood. The wood is beautiful and all this lovely inlay is really nice. And what is it or does it matter? Well, exactly. I think it's a nice box. Oh. It's just a nice thing to look it at. It is, it's lovely. And look at the inlay inside as well, which is really Splendid. quite nice. And also, it comes down to what you like, isn't it? Yes, what, it not is. what it's worth, but True. what you actually like and what you can live with. Mm. So you and live I think with I could live with that. I think it's quite a nice piece of furniture. Yes. It is. And a lovely colour wood. It's really, really pretty. It's amazing what you learn every time you go out antique buying, as long as you're not afraid to ask questions and get your hands on. Even though the items at the fair were more expensive than some of the other places we visited, the philosophy is very much the same. It's not necessary to buy anything which you feel is going to increase greatly in value. Make sure if you do buy something that you pay a fair price, but also be certain that you're going to enjoy having the item in your home. It's hard to believe now, but a generation ago, this area around me would have been a hive of activity, because this is the parade ground of RAF Helmswell, and hundreds of men were stationed here before, during and after the war. Now, up to ten years ago, it seemed like the area was falling into disrepair and part of the region's history was going to be lost. But then along came one man with a vision, Rex Miller, who renovated these buildings and turned them into the Helmswell Antiques Centre, one of the largest antique centres in Western Europe, and an antiques treasure trailer's dream. So, Rex, this is an amazing place. When was it last an RAF base? 1967, they actually finished with it, and then it was mothballed. And we acquired it 
11 years ago, or our section of it 11 years ago, totally derelict. Elephants out, you know, coming out of the trees and the bushes. No, <laughs> <laughs> there was no no water, no electricity, no panes of glass. The they, the SAS had used it as a training centre. Yes. And it was a terrible mess. With a great deal of hard work, the vision of the millers became a reality, helped by Rex's knowledge of the building trade and his wife Neppy's love of antiques. The diversity of choice now available is due to them. Each individual stall is selling something the other one isn't, so they've found little gaps in the marketplace. Um, one would specialise, say, in fishing tackle, another one kitchen alia, another one porcelain, Sheffield plate, silver, clocks, knobs and knockers, taps, you name <laughs> it, finger plates, whatever. This is great, Maurice. There's stuff everywhere, isn't there, in here? Every little room's full of things. Let's look in here. It's like Aladdin's cave, isn't it? Right, let's have a look, see what we've got. Nice. That's a good thing, a hippo jug. Well, I think that's one of your Calboot things, actually. I believe it's <laughs> well, what about that's these? Interesting tins, look. How about these? Oh, right. biscuit tins. If it open. People do actually collect those. I've got uh, quite a few of those myself. Yeah, with a lamp and these, look at that. That's the 1950s. People actually use those now in, uh, in conservatories. They put plants in, so they come over. Yeah, well, like that in our front room. They're quite expensive today. Oh, no, that isn't. It's £25, quite reasonable. It's, carry on, Morris. It's, like, it's like going shopping at Christmas, isn't it? It's great. What's that? Old pine steps. Right. Look, there's, look at that. Look at that. That's a room full of furniture. Yes. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, yes. Is that's... That we put cakes on? That's cake stand? A, exactly. You've got it in one. It's an Edwardian cake stand. And this, actually, and uh, th they're really known as Vicar's Delights. Really? Yeah, because the vicar used to be delighted if he went into a house and he saw that with cakes and he was in for a good afternoon. Vicar's Delight? Yes. And what about this thing? Oh, you? this is interesting, because this is a, a tantalus, and it's, it, you can't actually get the bottles out because it's locked. And this is, in the old days, uh, it was to stop the servants helping themselves to brandy or whiskey or whatever. <laughs> And so building upon building, lines of endless corridors, rooms upon rooms, stairs leading you to yet more floors of hidden treasures. From shops dealing with imported furniture to people who help you import goods from abroad. Old buildings keeping the history in their name, such as guard room antiques found at the entrance to the old airfield, providing memories of when the Air Force used the place. And even though the SAS don't use it as a training base anymore, I think they still could, as fitness comes into question as you wander around. And it's certainly a place you need to visit more than once. And what it certainly does show is the interest in antiques is growing ever more popular, no matter what age you are. I think a lot of it's to do with um, change in fashions. I mean, in the 70s, it was sort of G plan and open plan, no central fireplace, and open gardens and open everything. Everyone's going back to what Grandma had, and Laura Ashley had a lot to do with that thinking. For example, pine furniture, pine chests of drawers. The young like the look. So they're now, they probably started buying at 17, and as soon as they get married, they think, go to heaven, so I'll furnish my house. Wonderful. So you're getting teenagers coming to Yes, stuff. yeah, collecting all sorts of things. That's interesting. Are they trying mm. to recreate some kind of, like you said, grandma's yes, house? Yes, no, nostalgic scene, which they felt comfortable in. All these little rooms, if you look at them, there's kitchen area, there's dining room, bedroom, chairs, everything. Are there many places want. like this that are as big as this? This the is about the biggest I know, actually. And um, it's amazing in the middle of Lincolnshire that you've got an antique centre like this with so many dealers. Now, I would want to buy 20 old door keys, Maurice. A key collector. Right. They, they, they are about, yes. Lovely little piano stool. That is lovely. You mustn't sit on that, though. <laughs> What's this? Uh, a chest? This looks like a cellarette. I think we've seen one of these. Oh, it's a teapoy, sorry. Tea it, yes, keeping your tea in, actually. So you'd have one type of tea in there, one in there. There should be a, a glass bowl in there, which you mix the blends, you blended it according to your taste. And it was locked, of course, because tea was very expensive. So it'd be locked, and then the servants couldn't help themselves to the tea. It feels so comfortable, doesn't it? So friendly. Well, no one's following you about. You're completely free to, to look at things, aren't you? And touch them and poke yeah. them. Yes. As long as you don't break them. Yeah. 
The nice thing as well, I mean, you said feel comfortable. You feel mm. comfortable here. Sometimes mm. I go to antique places and I feel a bit scared. I think they're going to ask me some hard questions. But I feel here, I feel totally at home. You're free to wander. There's no yeah. no pressure we at all. We don't have hush terms no here, do we? No. Definitely not. A lot of laughing going on. <laughs> great yeah. fun, actually. It's yeah. a great fun business because you meet wonderful people. I think it's important when anybody does come is to write down every item is coded and because there are all the buildings are H blocks they were accommodation blocks for technicians and air crew etc if if you write down the code number because if you don't buy it there and then it'll be gone the next time you come down yes more than likely but if you write the code number and you've forgotten which building you were in then the girls on the desk will will point, know will yeah. know where it is the, the, these are very nice coffee tables, actually. Very Victorian turn legs, and lo and behold, we have a bee day. <laughs> is that what it is? Yes. A bee day? So it's not actually a coffee table? No, it's a bee day, actually. They used to have these in the bedroom, so the maid used to come up with the hot water, and then they could wash their bottoms in there. What What's else have you got this? Well, I think, sure, I think these, are, these are very decorative, really. You've got all this brass on it. It's an oak coal box. Is it? So it's, yes, it stands. It's Edwardian. So you just have that by the fireplace, polish all this up. Nice piece of furniture, complete with a bit of woodwork for authenticity. It's quite, quite nice, that. So what's your opinion of this kind of place, Morris? Do you like this kind of thing where you can have a kind of bath in antiques? Well, it's fascinating, isn't it? Because every room, you've got different periods, different items, and there's something for everybody. But even somebody like you who deals in antiques all the time, do you get a thrill when you come somewhere like this? Of course I do, because you never know what you're going to find. And I'm always on the lookout for items for customers anyway. So at the back of my mind, when I go into a room, I think, oh, yes, Mrs Jones has asked me to find one of those. It's almost like you can so, never rest. Uh, no, you can't. No, that's fascinating. Here's an interesting box, mahogany, with a nice inlay. And obviously from the, the uh, sign on the front, it, it tells you what's inside. You, know, you can guess what it is. I can. A sheet of music and a trumpet. We open it up. Hey. It's a lovely Victorian music box. It's beautiful. I love the way that it's glass so you can see the inside. That's right, and all those little pins that go against the comb to play the tune. And these are all the tunes it plays? It plays eight, eight, eight different tunes, one after the other. And if you look there, it's dated about 1873. Now, we've been going all over the place, but this is the first time we found one of these. So you can always find something new, can't you? You can in a place like this. I mean, if you, if, if you wanted a music box, well, you've seen all the, the, uh, the different rooms they've got in here. Surely in one of those rooms you'd find something like this. Mm. So um, it's a good place if, if you've got something in mind that you want. It's a safe bet that you could come here and you could find it. But I bet like when you go to a supermarket and come out with stuff you didn't want, I bet sometimes you come oh, out of well, these places. Yes, <laughs> I'm quite sure you do. Go for the day. Don't just go thinking you're going to spend an hour in there and you're going to get pot around and find what you want because they're huge sites. You're going to spend a day there anyway to get round. And, I mean, it's a woman thing, I know, but women never buy the first thing they come across. So be prepared for the fact that you're going to have to walk round all of the aisles and all of the building before you actually purchase anything. So, you know, that's something which you're going to do. So go for the whole day and take the family and take a picnic and, and, and make a day of it. You know, make it an enjoyable day. And if you come away with something great, and if you don't find what you want, well, it's been a day which you've enjoyed and you might end up collecting something else completely different. Whether you're just buying a house, refurbishing one you've lived in for a long time, or just looking to change the character of a room, the joy of collecting antiques need never end. It becomes a different type of journey. And sometimes you'll have pleasure in taking a special journey abroad to visit some of the most exclusive fairs around, or finding a bargain locally. The key is the same. Have fun and don't be intimidated. Well, this 
is Leslie Howard from In The Limelight who's brought us on this tour. And Leslie, it's my first time on such a tour as this and in Brussels, so why do people come on this sort of adventure almost? Well, for a variety of reasons. A, because everybody likes to travel, people are much braver now, and I think uh, collecting, of course, is enormous. And I think basically it's a, almost an antidote to the high street, you know, I mean, the, the possibilities of finding really some quite exceptional things. People, I think, at home have become more used to things like the car boot sale Certainly, experience. Yes. Is this really like an upmarket extension of that, but you can really have a good rummage? Yes, I think so, but there seems to be more of a tradition uh, here. The car booting is quite a new thing in Britain, but I think these sort of street markets in Europe have gone on for, for centuries, this idea that you literally put your wares out in the street. They're huge over here. I mean, the crowds today are, are massive. Now, I'm feeling this could turn out to be quite an expensive trip because I've just found a lovely looking... Well, it looks to me like a music box, but I'm not really too sure, so I'm just going to find out what this is about. This looks gorgeous. What exactly is it? Uh, it is a plate gramophone, and uh, the plate is in metal with copper brass. Huh? It's in good condition. It's from late, yes, late Victorian period. Uh, 1880, 1890, limit 1900. And which country does it come from? It's French. Could you demonstrate it for me? Yeah. These look really pretty. I think they might be in my price range. What, what exactly is this? It's uh, for making coffee. Uh, on s'appelle ça en français, filter. Same in English, so it's like a coffee uh, filter. I don't know in, in English uh, mm -hmm. the name. Filter? filter. I don't know. That's right. yes. So before the times of Cartier, can I just take the lid off? Yes. So I'll just show this. So you would put your coffee in I'll there. put the coffee here in. And then uh, you uh, put uh, uh, hot water in. And then the coffee comes here. And you think it's, it's uh, the cup. Practical advice I also got from Leslie is do not hesitate. Now that lovely picture I saw earlier, I want it very much. It's it's not too high, it's within my budget. So, Madame, could I look at that picture yes, again? I look for that. And I'm sure since you are yes, a lovely, yeah. lovely Flemish lady, your best right. your best price is a thousand, your best price is nine hundred, you say nine hundred. Okay Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, bit of haggling there, thank you. Try not break the goods. Um, Have you a bag? To... That would be brilliant in the in the rain. I'm really pleased with with my painting. Who is it by? You've got other examples there. Who is it painted by? It's uh, painted by Govarts from Antwerp. And when he died, uh, they found all the rest of his paintings in his house and they sold them to us. And now you have bought one of these. Lovely. So <laughs> yes. it might be something collectible for the future. And it's very much. We hope here. so. Eh? This is not a race against the clock or an attempt to find just a bargain. Sometimes there'll be treasures found, sometimes we'll make mistakes. But the aim is not to make loads of money, but to have fun doing something the family really enjoys. A hundred kilometres of antique stores, two million visitors every year. We talk about antique collecting being fun. Well, this is fun. Clocks have a, a great role in antiques. They're, they're, especially some of the more expensive ones, are uh, a mechanical beauty.